Hello, um, good morning, everyone. Um, it's 10 a.m. in Windhoek, Namibia, uh, 12 p.m. in Port Louis, Mauritius, and uh, 11 a.m. in Nairobi, Kenya. My name is uh, Michael Nguyen Kimani, and I'm very much uh, pleased to, uh, to be moderating this particular session. And thank you very much uh, for registering and uh, participating in the MAP competition. This is the second webinar that uh, we shall uh, be conducting and uh, we have a packed one hour session. So the agenda of the day um, are actually two items. Uh, the first item, I will give a recap of the MAP competition, uh, just in case somebody uh, recently registered and they don't know much about it. So I'll give a recap of that. Then uh, one of my colleagues called Pauline from Esri, uh, she will talk about the submission formats that we have. We have actually four submission formats that we are looking at. Uh, they are, um, story maps, web maps, data dashboards, as well as uh, web applications. So Pauline will take you through web maps and uh, web applications. And then my colleague also uh, called Isaac will take you through uh, what we call the story maps as well as the dashboards. So that is really the agenda of the day. And uh, first things first. So I uh, will uh, give you an overview of, um, of, uh, of, the, of the map competition. Um, maybe um, I hope uh, you can be able to see my screen. <clears throat> um, can you be able to see my screen? Maybe somebody can do a thumbs up. Yes, uh, it's visible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so the competition uh, was launched uh, in, on 21st of July. Uh, that is uh, a month ago and uh, it will run to until 22nd of uh, November, 2022, <coughs> excuse me. So the total price tag of the competition is 10,000 euros. And really the main theme of the competition is to enhance the role of uh, geoconservation in uh, protected area management, as well as uh, environmental conservation. Uh, so the timeline uh, are as indicated on the screen. So we started all the way from 21st July, the key date to note is that the registration ends on 30th September. So if there's somebody who is still, uh, who, who has not yet registered or you want, to, um, you want to inform to register, they have 30 days from today uh, to do the registration. Then um, after that, we will open the window for the submission. The window for the submission will run for 20 days and the deadline of it will be 20th of October. So this basically means that um, uh, immediately after the registration ends, we shall have another webinar where we shall uh, highlight how the submission will be done. So that will come in the next webinar series that uh, we shall be conducting. Uh, for today, we'll just be focusing on submission formats that uh, uh, you can choose to submit your, your entry. Then uh, the winner will be awarded uh, on 22nd of November. And uh, this will take place in uh, Kampala, uh, Uganda. So we have uh, 24 countries uh, who, will, uh, who are participating. They are shaded in yellow there uh, from Sudan all the way down to South Africa. So if you are in one of those participating countries, uh, you should be able to participate successfully. Uh, the objective, I had indicated it a bit earlier, but it's to really create and enhance the use of other observation and to create awareness to the various data sharing portals as well as uh, observatories that uh, we do have. So that is really the objective. And um, the idea here is to really uh, create a fun way of creating maps and sharing them uh, in a simple way. Um, so the award prizes are divided into, two, into four categories. So we have the first category, which is on forestry, protected areas, as well as wildlife. Uh, the price tag is 2,000 euros. Then we have another category for marine, oceans, as well as coastal information. Uh, it's 2000 as well. Then the third category is on land degradation, wetlands and conservation. Uh, the price tag is 2000. Uh, we shall have a people's choice award uh, whereby uh, the winner will be voted by five uh, by, by, by people. And uh, the five people will be selected by the judges. So we will have um, the overall winner going home with around 4,000 euros. And additionally to this, all the four winners will receive a one year ESRI ArcGIS uh, uh, license uh, that they can use and uh, courtesy of uh, our, our strong partners ESRI. So the judging criteria will be five items. 
really we are looking at uh, the map should be map centric. Uh, the design layout should be nice. It should be visually appealing. It should uh, be communicating something very, very strongly and uh, effective use of geographical information. So you can read more details about this in the website. Um, so we have also listed some data sources where you can get some data. And uh, what you are required is to, when you are submitting your entry, uh, you need to use at least two data sets from any of the above um, uh, named data sources. So the data sources are listed there from the Protected Planet, the Africa Geoportal, the RCMRD Open Data Platform, PESA Geoportal, as well as the GMS and Africa Geoportal. Uh, so you need to pick at least two data sets from, uh, uh, from any of the above named data sources. And if you have any other data sets, uh, data sets in different locations you want to use, uh, feel free uh, to do that. So the submission formats that uh, we are looking at are uh, four. Uh, we have web maps, and then we have story maps. We also have data dashboards, and we have map applications. In this particular webinar, we will be looking at the four submission formats that uh, you can submit your uh, entry. And uh, I should also mention that um, you can submit as many entries as you wish. You can submit um, as many as you wish. Uh, and then uh, the main platform that we shall be using to do the submission of these uh, products uh, is ArcGIS Online. Uh, so definitely uh, you will need to uh, create an account there. And uh, that platform, you can use it to uh, create the four products uh, that uh, I've just mentioned. So as I wind up, I would like to give uh, credit and thanks to our participating projects and partners. That is Biopama. Biopama in full means Biodiversity and Protected Area Management. You also have GMS and Africa. GMS means Global Monitoring for the Environment of Security in Africa. Then we also have the OFESA project, uh, which is for East and Southern Africa Forest Observatory. And uh, our strong partners are IUCN, the Joint Research Center of the European Union Commission, ESRI, the Protected Planet, the Center for International Forest Research. Uh, those are our key partners. So I would like to stop there and um, hand over to uh, my colleague, Pauline. Uh, she will start off the, uh, the presentation and uh, Pauline will talk about um, web maps and the web application. After Pauline is done, Isaac will jump in and uh, he will talk about the uh, story maps as well as the data indicator dashboards. Over to you, Pauline. Thank you. Um... Okay, so I'll just share my screen. I hope you can hear me clearly and you can see my screen. Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, thank you. So just starting off from uh, where we left off in the last session, uh, where we covered how you can access, how you can have an account on Africa Geo Portal for the competition in case you don't have an access online account and how you can go about accessing data from uh, the data sources that um, Gobi had mentioned. So um, I'll take the I'll take the next few minutes to just walk us through how we can get data from some of the listed sources here and create web maps which you can proceed to um, submit uh, for the competition or to create um, applications from the configurable apps that we have. So one of the sources that was mentioned is the Living Atlas which is a collection of data, which could be any kind of just spatial content that could be maps, apps, or um, layers, um, and all kinds of information around just spatial data that ESRI curates on behalf of a number of our partners or agencies. So from the Living Atlas, you'll be able to browse data sets that are specific to conservation, biodiversity, um, um, environment and any other category of data that you feel we, you will need to use it for your um, map when you're creating your map on um, for the competition. So you'll see we have uh, categories of data where we have trending data, base map that you can take advantage of, imagery in case you'd like to take advantage of um, multispectral imagery, demographic information. Um, in this case, uh, we have things like transportation, uh, utility networks, and so on, and definitely the environment. So you're able to get all that kind of data from here. So if you were to, for example, um, search for a data set 
from this particular location. You can see you have a number of results and you're able to just filter by content type, uh, maybe data within a specific period, a certain zone, and maybe also just have something that's specifically from Esri. And you can see already Esri has, on behalf of a number of participating organizations, made available these layers within Living Atlas, and you can open them directly. Um, you can open them directly into, into, your, into your Africa GeoPortal account. So one of the layers I'm particularly interested in is um, marine species of the world. So if I was to just um, search for that, I can get some information published by an authoritative source. So for example, if I was interested in this one, if I just open it, I'm able to see a description of the data set. You can see it's from the Living Atlas. Um, it's as curated and it just gets a description of where this data comes from, uh, the coverage and all of that and how I'd be able to use it. So from that point, I'm able to open this layer within a map viewer. And the map viewer is your canvas that you'll be using to design your map, um, apply different kinds of styling to your data uh, so that you have the final result. So when I open this, you can see that I have this information on display uh, at a global scale, and I was just able to filter this information just to remain with something specifically uh, for Africa. So I'll just remove this um, layer and only have this specific data for Africa. So from that point on the map viewer, some of the things I'd be able to do is um, be able to look at the properties, look at the attributes table to see what's inside the data set and so on. And if I click on one particular feature, I can see some information on a pop-up that is on display. So one of the first things I'd like to do is just change the appearance of the base map, then proceed to change the appearance of this layer on marine uh, mammal species and different on different ecoregions around Africa. Uh, do a bit of styling, then share this as our web map. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just come and uh, choose a and choose a base map from the Living Atlas again. As you saw, we have a number of base maps that will be available there. And I'll just search for a specific one called Fifth Century and be able to add it to replace my base map. And once that is done, if I <clears throat> click on my particular if I click on my particular base map, one of the properties um, I'd be able to change are things like uh, transparency and so on. But something that has been introduced onto your map viewer is the ability to change the appearance of your base map uh, as, as an effect that you could have. So one of the things that you could do is probably change it to grayscale so that our data pops out, then probably invert this so that we have um, the continent appearing as gray, as it, sorry, as black, then the ocean appearing as gray because our emphasis here is on the marine ecosystem. So um, after that, uh, I can just uh, close my base map here and come back to my layer. And uh, one of the things I would like to do on my layer again is to probably change how it appears. So in this case, I have my um, ecosystem uh, sorry, my marine mammal species by different ecoregions, where I would like to style this based on count and amount. So we can just see that places that there are high number of mammal species, they appear darker than other places, which is something I could keep it at that, or I can make additional changes uh, to the property. So this could be maybe make, making the transparency maybe to be um, a bit lighter so that it blends a bit to the background, it's not too striking and so on. So those are just some of the few updates you could make to um, a layer that you've added, uh, just change the appearance and so on. I can also update my pop-up so that it has relevant information. So as of now, it just has uh, a title for the pop-up as well as all the fields available. And maybe my interest is to not have all the particular fields, but just have uh, one field that has this information. So I'd be able to do that as just having that information, or I can remove that and just say, I will have a description which will contain <clears throat> the pop-up text, whereby I'm saying for this particular ecoregion, it has um, 
a number of marine species and so on. So I can close my pop-up there and we just have a simple map, which we've uh, changed the base map. We've updated the layer to look a certain way and we are able to convey information. So still from that point, I'd be able to add a data set. Um, so in this example, again, from Living Atlas, I can add a um, layer on that is at has trending data or that has um, a live feed of a data set. So in this case, I'm adding ocean currents. And this is just a layer that has been made available uh, that just displays the ocean currents um, around the world. So with that um, on my layer, again, I can come to update the symbology. So instead of it appearing as vector, um, lines on the map, I can choose the option of flow. And then I can change my appearance to make sure that um, it's a bit faster. The density is a bit more, the length of the flow is longer so that it looks like an actual current. Then I can change the appearance of my color ramp so that um, instead of it blending too much with that species over there, I can make it to be in such a striking way. So after that, we just have a map that has the marine mammal species. And maybe this can be used by someone just to show that. Maybe the places where we have high current or a very warm current, there would be an effect on how, uh, how many species are being, um, uh, being found there or how many are being um, made available within those places. So after that, I'd be able to save my map. And once my map has been saved, I have the option of sharing it out. So for share options, you can share it um, with an organization, with a group, or publicly. So I think uh, one of the submission requirements is to have this map shared publicly with everyone. So if you choose um, everyone after that, you'd have a map that any of the judges would be able to access it and uh, be able to, to give um, insights on what you've been able to do and so on. So another data source that was mentioned is the protected planet um, data source here. We have a lot of uh, layers that are made available and one of them is this layer on protected areas across um, Africa, oh, sorry, across the world. So we have terrestrial, marine and other uh, effective areas. So again, um, they've provided a mechanism to be able to access this data where you are able to download it. Or again, uh, within Living Atlas, you'll be able to access this data set from there and make use of it. So that's what I was able to do. And I'd have my layer of protected areas within my map. And we can see that, um, we can see that for this particular layer, we have, um, some information there on the legend where we can see there are different kinds of protected areas and so on. <clears throat> so again, one of the things I could do is choose a base map that would bring out this information clearly. Then other than protected areas, one of the things that I could do is add something on fires. So at times we have cases where uh, there are fire incidents in these areas and I might want to just be able to visualize this information. So we have the modest thermal data set, which you can just have there from the Living Atlas. It's coming from NASA. And again, Esri has been able to uh, make this information available for you. And if I come to the layers, you'll see that it's actually a group of data. So I can just, um, I can just ungroup and then remove this one for seven days so that I just uh, have uh, the one for the last uh, 48 hours. So we can just have a simple base map that, uh, sorry, a simple layer and base map and another layer on display there. And one of the things I'd like to do for this layer is that if we look at the attribute information, you find that all of these layers are just where um, it was suspected there was a fire which is um, quite a lot. And I might want to only see places where the, where maybe uh, we were 98% sure that there would be fire within those particular places. So you'll see that filters are displayed just to have um, areas where the fire would be highly probable. 
Then after that, we can come to effects again to use some of the effects indicated here, if that's something you'd like to do. You're also free to change the style or the appearance of your symbology. Um, just to make sure, again, it's not too striking, it doesn't fight too much with the, with the background of the map and so on. And um, after that, one of the things that I'd like to do is just, again, change my um, symbology so that I just have one simple appearance here for my styling options. So I will change it to something that fits with the map itself in the background. Um, then after that, uh, one of the properties I could do is choose an overlay. So ideally what would happen is that the, the section of the protected areas within Africa are uh, being made distinctively different from um, um, the other parts of Africa that ideally are not so distinct. But you're free to use any of these options uh, basically to just um, decide which of the options you'd like to use for, for changing the kind of overlay uh, that should be there and so on. So again, once you've chosen uh, maybe something that you prefer to highlight where the protected areas are and where the fires are, again, you'd be able to save this and uh, share it out or create an application. And finally, you can also work with 3D data sets uh, within your um, analysis or within the, the, the competition, whereby you can take a layer that has um, an additional attribute that you could visualize or is actually in 3D. So in this case, again, I can search for a data set from Living Atlas. And my interest here is to use something on human modification. And in this case, we have a layer that looks at a proportion of conservation, protection, and human modification. So I'll just add this to the scene. And basically, that particular layer is just breaking down the world into grids. And we can just see areas where there's high uh, conservation and areas where conservation is not so high because of human modification. So what I could do is uh, change the layer properties um, in this case. So one of the things is that I've chosen one field for um, visualizing this information. Sorry, let me just start comment. Change my attribute here. And I'm just interested in rangeland. Uh, looking at this information as per rangeland and have it uh, in 3D format. So if I was to um, tilt the map a bit, I'd be able to um, see this information in 3D format as visible. But beyond that, I can decide to also uh, filter this information based on um, another field. So in this case, I'm interested in rangelands that are specifically within protected areas. Um, so I'll just change my display there a bit. And from that point, I'll just be able to see rangelands that actually um, um, fall within areas that are about maybe, um, let me just switch to party about 30% um, uh, within protected areas and so on. After that, again, I can choose one of these base maps um, available. Sorry, my machine is really doing its best here to, do, to display everything as fast as possible. Um, but also um, I, I could choose, let me probably choose that way kind of because uh, what we have there. And uh, once that is done, Again, um, with what is on display, with the three, with the with the theme, uh, I'd be able to create slides or to to uh, create sections of navigation which our uh, users uh, can take advantage of. So, for example, I could just start with the first display and have this slide as Africa. 
then I could try to navigate to the western part of Africa so that we just look at that section and the protected areas within this area. And then I can just capture the slide as West Africa. Then um, from that point, I'll move to the south. Then we have the slide for South Africa. And these are slides that a user will be able to navigate. So they have the starting point, then they can start navigating to the different parts. After that, um, once you're done with the scene, you're able to save it. Just make sure you put in a title, tags to make it searchable and give a summary that should be useful to someone. So just going back to our original map here, um, uh, as you saw that you are able to save it. But after that, uh, one of the things that should be possible from this point is to be able to to be able to create an application. So we have different options for application. Um, instant apps are just templates that we've made available as Esri within Africa Geoportal or Access Online to quickly create your maps. Uh, Experience Builder has a more enhanced um, ability to configure how the app would be and story maps and dashboards will be covered by Isaac. So if you just choose the option of instant apps, it gives you a number of templates that you could uh, take advantage of uh, to create your particular application. So from that, you can see we have listed applications that have been made available there. And um, you can search by particular capabilities. So for example, if I wanted that template that would allow printing or would allow someone being able to take a screenshot I could search by that capability and only get the apps that have that particular capability. Also, I could choose the option of compatibility to just have this filtered again based on the data I have displayed on my web map so that it just scans and sees which um, application template would be best suited to that. Uh, but one of the things that you could also do is the ability to preview how your map would appear uh, based on a particular template. So I could choose basic and you can see to just have basic navigational um, 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 tools there for the map. So you can go to home, you can um, zoom and, and you can see the legend and so on. So if I chose that option, you can see I'm able to put in some information. Then I create the application, which will take a few seconds for this to load. And from there, I'm able to configure this application. So we have an express format for configuring the app because sometimes we just want to create an output that will be relevant. Um, and we just want to make sure that the map is in order. Uh, we have a description for the application. When someone clicks the about section, they'll get that description about the application. We like to just select what kind of um, interactivity a user would have within uh, that particular application. And um, in addition to that, um, again, we can just indicate which kinds of uh, basic uh, navigational tools will be available for that particular app. So once that is done, once you've made your uh, configurations, you're able to publish, and this will now be a public application which can be used, um, which can be shared and, and used uh, for different kinds of purposes, including participating in the competition. I think with that, I'll just hand over to Isaac to continue with the other section. Thank you. Hi, Pauline, that's fine. So I'll, uh, I'll only talk about the dashboards and the story maps. So I'm Isaac Fadamula here at RCMRD. So let me share my screen. So hope everyone can be able to see my screen. 
So this an assumption that you've already acquired your data from the African Geoportal or any other source that you indicated, that is Bioparma, the protected planet. So I'll have a... So this is my source of data that I'll be able to get my data from. So as Pauline earlier indicated, you can be able to choose which thematic area you want to get data for. So I already, I click on protected areas. So once you download your data, you'll have to come to your, to your platform. So we'll ensure you create a folder that where your data will be stored. I'll uh, show by an example. So for example, if I create a folder called uh, map competition, so a folder will contain all your working that you'll have uh, done before submission. So this is my working folder, assuming I've uh, gathered all the data. So I'll take you directly to what uh, I've done. Now, our, our dashboard always starts with a web map as you've been taken through. You have to create a web map so that the dashboard will be reading from the created web map that you have. So I'll open in a classic viewer. This is your web map. So I hope if you have other data that you can be able to add, you simply click on add. What you're seeing here is the protected areas in the world, the data that I've uh, acquired from uh, the protected planet. So you can add as much data as possible. For example, admin data, you can add from file, you can add from web, you can still add from the living atlas that has been demonstrated some few minutes ago. So ensure you save, and you must be able to specify the correct name that you're saving your map with. Now, from after you've saved your web map, you'll, uh, you'll go to your contents here. So you click on content. And then from the folder that you're working on, you click on create application. You click on create application, you'll have instant apps. We have a web app builder, we have ArcGIS story maps and ArcGIS. So once you click on dashboards, when you click on dashboards, it will direct you to another window. So you specify your, the name of your dashboard. Let's say dashboard, dashboard one. Then you can put your tags. Tags are normally, helpful when you're searching a specific dashboard or, a spe or you want to filter your dashboards for easier communication. So I can just say Bioparma or any, dash any keyword that you uh, like to write there. You can have a brief summary of your dashboard and then ensure you select the specific folder that you're working with so that you don't get to lose your data. Myself, I'll select uh, Bioparma. And then uh, once I'm done, you click on Create Dashboard. Sorry. You click on Create Dashboard. Oh, so your dashboard is empty. Now from here, you have to get to know what are the elements of a dashboard. And the basic, the first element you have to include in your dashboard is a map because it has to communicate where your data is, where is it on the earth surface. So these elements are chosen according to your, your main aim of communication. So I'll choose the web map called the Bioparma project. Now here you choose some of the interactive elements that will be appearing on your map. So you can select either all of them or you can choose not to select 
all of them. So for my case, I'll just select, then I'll include the scale bar. And then uh, once I'm done, you click on done. So your web map will be called from the initial web map that you created with all your data displayed here. Now, ensure you save. Any slight change you make, you ensure you save. Now, what is the second? On the layout, you can still add, um, but before you go to layer the body, you can be able to edit this title by adding a header. So instead of reading dashboard one, you can come and say protected areas dashboard. So from here, you can choose the text color, let's say green or black, we remain with black. You can choose the background color. So protected areas will give it a thematic color of green. That's fine. Then once you're done, you click on done. So that's the, your title of your dashboard. You can come back to body and then add an element. So you have several elements that you can be able to add on your dashboard. You have the map legend. This will be showing what, what symbol represents what on the map. You have the serial chart. That's the um, bar chart, the normal bar chart. We have the pie chart, comparative of several variables. Indicator, indicator this normally for quantitative data. For example, you want to show on the dashboard how many protected areas are in the world. Then a gauge is like an indicator, but the normal gauge. A list, a list will help you when you're doing a selection. For example, you want to know the number of protected areas in Kenya. A table, a table is just a summary of the, of the attributes of a specific selected area. And then details, this is just, just a summary of a protected area or a, a particular, particular item that you are communicating. Rich text, this is a normal text, then embedded content, if you are calling an element from another source. So I'll go through, you can map, and you can add a map element, this for the African countries, or if you don't want, you can still delete it here. So I'll quickly add uh, an indicator. So wait. Now, oh, this is the total number of protected areas in, uh, in the world. So we are mapping by object ID. Now, maybe this one, people might think how, what is 258.9K? So to modify that, you can be able to come to the indicator here, click on general. So you can rename this indicator. The reason why you are renaming is that you might want to use this indicator later or when you're linking your map to your body elements. So we normally pre advise that you rename it to total protected areas indicator so that whenever you want to call it later, you, you're able to identify it. Instead of writing indicator one, indicator two, you might be confused what stands for indicator one and what stands for indicator two. So the title will be total protected areas, PA. So this one, you can still modify it. You can uh, modify it, suit the presentation, you can, come here and increase the size. You can still scroll down and uh, choose the background color. You can give it green or any pleasant color that you may like. Then you can, you can have a last update text. When was it last updated? You can choose whether to have it or not. Then we'll do, you can enable the data download. Remember you, you also, wish other people to download or to use your data, you can enable this icon. Then from here, you click on uh, done. Now, once you've added an element or 
you've made a change, you ensure to save, always save your data. Then another element I'm going to add is a list. Again, from the not here. So there's a layer for, there's a layer for admin boundaries that I've added. That is the African countries. From this, I'll be able to go to list. Then I don't want to make to label this list by numbers. So I'll go to this curly braces and then select. You can either select ISO 3, ISO 2, but now not all people understand what ISO 3 or ISO 2 stands for. So I'll choose the specific field called country. Then I don't want these polygons to be appearing before the country. So what do I do? Come on list. Then on line item icon, I click on none. Again, you can choose your text color from here. You can choose your background and you can choose what, if you select an item here, what color should be displayed. So I'll leave it at the default. Then you can also choose the selection color. If an item is selected, what color should it show on the, on the list? So I've chosen green. From here, you, you ensure you communicate. This is the country's list. Country's list. I can give it a title so that someone knows this is a, this a country list. Countries, you can format it your way. So you can give it, this is basic formatting. So I'll not go, I'll not dwell so much on that. You'll click on done. So we are adding these elements one by one. Maybe another element you can add here is uh, an indicator, still from the database. So an indicator, what is our, our indicator on? No, sorry. Sorry, let me add, because uh, I've I'd already added the total PS, let me add a pie chart. So a pie chart, maybe you're comparing. Remember protected areas are split into categories. You have the IUCN category, we have the Ramsar sites. So I'll choose uh, which category I want to represent this data. So I'll uh, maybe choose a uh, nation. What is the designation of this data? So you'll be told that they cannot render too many categories. So there's a lot. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll just and choose protected areas definition. Protected areas definition. So what are we field? Choose the field protected areas definition. So still it's too much. Maybe I can choose another category here. So I'll choose a management authority. So we find that there's no data for that field. So here, this, the data might be huge. So that's why it's taking some time to call the data into our, ownership type. So I've uh, managed to add ownership type. If I add ownership type, what do I do next? I can be able to go to slices. You can edit the symbolization from here. If you would like to change from the normal colors presented there, come to chart, the settings are okay. You can add a legend. So legend can have value and have percentages. 
So placement, you can either choose to either side or bottom, depending on how your box is. And have labels, either as percentages. I will come to general. Can have uh, management category pie chart. So management. Then I can have a title management category. So that is it. You can still format it the way you want. Then once you are sure that that's what you want, you can be able to click on done. Now, so you can add as many components as possible or as many elements as possible, depending on what you want to communicate. So once you've added this, Ensure that your dashboard is still arranged. So, for example, this one is not fine. So, you can drag your items to a, a good location. So, let me say I drag it here. I add it as a row. Now, once I add it as a row, I can be able to squeeze this one. Then I can uh, still over add here, drag this one here, put it on. Here, add it as a column. Or you can choose to stack. So let me add. So you can add it here as a column, or I can still move it to be here. So moving, it will depend on where you want to add your map or add your element. So once you've done that, you can be able to have a complete dashboard, which I'm going to display here. Now on interactive elements can come and set. So we want these figures or these elements on the map, on the body to be linked to this list. So we'll come and edit your list. We'll come and edit your list. Before you edit your list, ensure you change this figure to the normal values. So you go to configure, then indicate. You go to value formatting, then unit prefix, you remove it. So that will be your, that will be your normal numbering style so that everyone can be able to understand what you're doing. So I'll go back to a completed uh, dashboard. So I'll click on edit. So this is my sample dashboard that I've completed. Now we want to link this list to all the elements in this map. So what you do, you come to configure, configure. So you want, if you select a country, it shows you whatever is in that country. You'll go to actions, then on filter, you choose the targets. So since there are no similar columns or similar fields with the same name, you will always choose, you check the spatial, spatial, then spatial, spatial. 
course, you can you don't have a layer that has the same column or field names. But if we have the same field names for all the layers that we've added here, you can choose fields and select if it's a country on the African country layer and a country field on the WDP layer. If they are the same names, so you can be able to use fields. But since they are of different names, you can be able to select by location. That's why I'm selecting. All these are selected as partial. Then we like, if we select a layer, if we select a country here, it flashes to alert the user of, of that dashboard that this is the country that has been selected. Do we need to show pop-ups? You can still check it if you want, or if you don't want to show pop-ups, you can again turn it off. Pan, you can zoom. So whenever I select a layer, you can be able to exactly zoom to the location. Instead of people panning again, searching for the specific country, it just zoom automatically. Now, once you're done, so let me change. Once you're done, you click on done. So that whenever you choose a country here like Benin, it goes exactly to where Benin is and all the statistics and all the elements change automatically. Ensure you save, always save this dashboard so that in case of any new change, they reflect on the actual dashboard. So this is the dashboard I have. I have the editing window and then the view window. This is the final dashboard that you'll be able to share with your group or share with us. I save. So once you save, you can be able to share, you can publish and share a link to your dashboard. So next, we are going to story maps. So a story map is just a presentation, a small presentation that you make. A small presentation like a PowerPoint, but in a, a special environment. So I'll still go back to my folder. So always remember to work from your folder. So from your folder, you click on create app. Then you'll also be displayed by this dialog box. So you'll have to choose HGG story maps. And before you create a story map, ensure if you are using any video, any audio, or any photo, you have all your materials in a folder ready for story maps. We'll have a, an open window like this. So you can have the title of your story. So I'll open one of the story maps that I've done. Still, if you chose protected areas, you can have it as a, this is the story map. I'll view and edit. So the title of my story map here is evolution of protected areas, which I've written here. So you can always change this to suit what you want to communicate or depending on the data that you are using. So these are the photos that I'm talking about. You can be able to download or get your own photos. This is the layout you can always choose here what you want to be displayed. You can replace an image, or if you don't want that image, you can be able to remove the image. So story maps also have uh, elements. So some of the elements that you can demonstrate here, if you want to add an element, so I'll say evolution, evolution of protected areas, for example. Then you can add a cover image here or a cover video, as we discussed. You browse your files, or you save your photos. So I can say, let me add uh, this. 
or depending on the photo that you've chosen, what you feel you should be having as your, your cover photo. Then what I do next, you can come on, on the design and choose how your cover page will look like. If you want it to have a title within it, you choose this, this layout, it's called the full layout. Then you can have a small introduction here. Yeah. Then it's done by who? By Isaac. So that's the first element you can add, the cover photo. Now the next element you can be able to add is um, a text. So let's say you want to describe your, your treated areas. Maybe you want to introduce what protected areas in. So you can introduce your title. Once you're done, you can choose to add a separator so that you separate the introduction and the main, the other text. So this is the introduction. So again, you can format it. You can format it, you just select, and then you can bold. And always align center, you can align left. You can add another element here, either map. So maybe you want to show where that is located. And this one allows you to choose either from the web map that, that you created, or you can add an express map. An express map is where you now pick your own points. So it will come with that dialog box. So for example, if I want to add my already map, I can choose uh, Bioparma protected areas. So you can choose either to edit or not to edit. Then once you're done, you click on add. Sorry for that, my screen is so small. So if it's not okay, you can go to edit in ArcGIS. Once you're done, once you're done with adding, you can still add another, another element. So you choose uh, your files. Again, I'll choose whichever I want to use, then done then you can have a small description about that image. So assuming this is a protected area called, called Karura, you can always add your caption. Now, once you're done, you can again come and choose another element here. You can have a swipe. A swipe is a comparison of two images. Let's say you are comparing that protected area in 2010 versus that the same protected area in 2020. You can always choose those two images and have, let's say, an image here. Another image. So that you can be able to, if someone is utilizing your story map, you can be able to tell the difference between the two images. And you can always add some text. You can change the layout here, medium, full, or even 
small. So you will uh, be able to add those elements one by one. And add a timeline. So it depends on what elements you want to add, but ensure you have a list, these listed elements here. Now, once you're done, you click on, you can have your content here, your attribution, then add credits, and then you have the credits header. Once you're done, you can preview, you can preview your story map. So it will be like this. So once you're satisfied that your story map is fine, you go back and then you can come here and can either share, sharing level, you can share to everyone since you'll be submitting your story map. Once you share with everyone, you click on publish. So once you publish, you can be able to send your link to your story maps. So this is an example of what you've done. So borrowing from the same example, you can be able to come up with your story maps that will finally be used to be judged and award marks. So I think I'll stop from there, unless there's a question from the participants. Is there any question? So I can uh, return back to Ngugi to take over from there. Yeah, thank you very much, Isaac and uh, Pauline for that um, elaborate uh, presentation um regarding the uh the four submission formats that is the story maps the web applications the web apps um the web maps as well as the indicator dashboard uh we have uh, run out of time uh, over five minutes uh but thank you very much for joining maybe just two key things that uh, i would want to comment uh one is on uh, the issue of data sources you can make use of other data sources uh, you are uh, allowed to do that uh, the only thing that you need to do is to ensure that uh, at least two of those data sources that you have used uh, are from the geoportals that uh, we have listed there. Uh, we we'll provide the recordings and the slides that uh, have been used in this particular session uh, on your respective emails. Uh, we'll also have other webinars that uh, will be focusing on various things. Uh, maybe there's a specific thing that you are interested in. Uh, we will do a poll uh, perhaps a bit later so that we can get uh, your feedback and views on what kind of, um, of, uh, of a webinar do you want, uh, especially the technical ones. And um, in that regard, I would like to ask to close this uh, particular session. And uh, let's hope that um, you'll join us in the next webinar. And uh, in case you have any question or uh, in future you have some clarification you're seeking, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, thank you very much. I wish you a, I wish you a good day and a good week as the as the week comes to a close thank you very much bye bye